Welcome to this short video on substance misuse. This is the fourth video in the series, and this is a resource for healthcare practitioners. My name is Dr. Krisha Patel, and I'm the mental health lead for the company. In the last session, I talked about the audit screening tool, which is used to screen for alcohol use problems. And I'd like you to do an exercise and have a go at doing the audit C tool on yourself. So screen yourself for any alcohol use problems or a colleague if you are working with someone. I've added the link in the description box below. And just to let you know, the audit screening tool is not just NHS guidance, it's actually World Health Organization, WHO guidance. So hopefully you've all screened yourself for alcohol use problems and are in the lower risk category. So this is a simple explanation of what is meant by brief advice. And brief advice is given to those who drink at levels of increasing risk. So that's this at risk use yellow box here or higher risk. So this harmful use here, but it's not suitable for the drinker who is dependent or possibly dependent. It's opportunistic, so it can be just five minutes or 10 minutes, can be a bit less, can be a bit more. Many people who attend sexual assault referral centres or are detained in the police stations do not see a healthcare practitioner very often, and many of them are not even registered with a GP. Therefore, when you see them as a healthcare practitioner on duty at the police station, you should take the opportunity and give some ad hoc health promotion advice. As there is an overrepresentation of mental health issues and substance misuse issues in detainees attending police custody, it's good practice to start screening as many people as possible for alcohol use problems. Evidence says for every eight people who receive some brief alcohol advice, one of them will reduce their drinking to lower risk levels. So although many clients won't change their behaviour following your advice, there is evidence to state that one in eight people who receive the advice will take it on board and reduce their drinking to lower levels. So you can think about this as a bit of a numbers game. So the more you do it, the more likely one of your clients or one of your patients will take this advice seriously and take on board what you tell them and reduce their drinking. Any frontline staff member can deliver this. It doesn't need any specific training. There's lots of resources online to help you understand what brief advice is. You don't need to be a counselor or psychologist to be able to do this. And brief advice is a structured method. So what sort of things do you think you could ask or discuss when giving brief advice to somebody about their alcohol use? I'd like you to pause the video now and write down your thoughts. If you're working in small groups, then discuss this amongst yourselves. So one thing you could do is say objectively to the client, your current level of alcohol use puts you in the higher risk category. How do you feel about that? This is to explore their own feelings about their alcohol use. Are they ambivalent? Are they aware that they are drinking more than the recommended amounts? Or have they normalized their drinking? Do they say things like, all my mates drink like that as well, or all my mates drink more than me? It's really about opening up the conversation and making it normal to talk about alcohol and encouraging the patient to be as honest with us as possible and honest about the support they need to change. Often people just aren't aware of how many units of alcohol they're drinking. So people usually understand that alcohol can affect the liver, but they may not be aware that alcohol can increase the risk of many health conditions, for example, cancer. There's an increased risk of cancer along the GI tract, the gastrointestinal tract, such as mouth, throat, bowel, stomach, and liver cancer. And there's also increased risk of breast cancer. Alcohol use can also contribute to heart disease and cause heart diseases and rhythm disturbances and contribute to high blood pressure. So we're good to discuss what the pros and cons of drinking are for that client. 
should explore with them any ambivalence to change. Do they fear change? And we can signpost to substance misuse support services should they need it in the future or if the client requests it. The frames principle can be used to provide brief advice to someone. So the frames principle, the F stands for feedback, and that's feedback on the person's risk of having alcohol problems. Responsibility, so stressing that change is the person's responsibility. Giving advice, so providing clear advice when requested. Menu, so providing the options for change. Empathy, so an approach that is warm, reflective and understanding. And self-efficacy optimism about the person's ability to change their own behaviour, giving them confidence to do so. So if you identify in the audit tool or just through your own clinical assessment that someone has possible dependence on alcohol, brief advice is usually not suitable. If they want support, you should signpost them to their local substance misuse service. And if they consent, what I often do is fill out an online self-referral form with the client. This usually involves submitting some personal details like a phone number, address and name. And then the substance misuse service will usually call them back the following day or within a few days. Of course, the patient may not want to use a substance misuse service or may not want to be referred to one for whatever reason. And in these cases, it's good practice to explore why exactly that is. Sometimes the patient just doesn't understand what a substance misuse service can offer them. If the patient does not want a referral, then you cannot make someone engage with a substance misuse service. And as mentioned in the slide before, the responsibility for change lies with the patient. So in these cases, when the patient does not want to be referred, I just make them aware of what the local service is and let them know that they can change their mind at any time and explain that they can self-refer to the service at any time should they need to. And sometimes patients don't want to be referred to a substance misuse service, but they want advice on how to cut down on their alcohol use. They might be trying to do this on their own. In these cases, I just tailor my advice making sure that they know not to stop drinking suddenly and recommending basic things like keeping an alcohol consumption diary so that they can know accurately how much they are drinking every week, encouraging them to get the support from their GP and giving them practical help with gradually cutting down on alcohol. And often I provide clients with a little takeaway card that gives them the phone number of the local drug and alcohol service and the name of the service so that they can put it in their wallet and if they want to refer themselves in the future then they can have this little reminder in their wallet to do so. As a final exercise I'd like you to find out about your local substance misuse service by exploring their website. So please spend some time exploring your local substance misuse service and seeing what services they provide so that when you do see somebody with substance misuse problems, then you can explain exactly what services they can offer. So support services are different in different areas, but they would include things like peer support and peer mentoring, support groups. So there may be sub specific support groups for women. There may be a recovery cafe or smart groups. It could be access to home detox where home visits are conducted by a nurse and medications can be given at home to manage the symptoms of withdrawal. There can be options of community detoxes where the client attends a clinic several times a day to collect medication where it is observed to be taken and that's medication to manage any withdrawal symptoms. There may be options for inpatient detoxes, though I have to mention these are use less frequently these days and that's because they're not necessarily more effective than community detoxes so if they're not more effective then they may as well go for a community detox however there are some cases particularly those high risk cases where there's a high risk of seizure for example where an inpatient detox may be recommended 
and they may offer psychological intervention, which is, of course, the mainstay of treatment for addiction. And you should have a look if there's any specialist young person service as well, or a special specialist women service. So that takes us to the end of this session. And in the next session, we're going to talk about how substance misuse services can support those who use drugs. So that's illicit drugs like heroin or cocaine or cannabis. And I'm also going to talk about harm reduction. Thank you for listening. Please check out the other resources on my channel.